So, here I am, I made it back to the United States. If you do not know, I recently was in Berlin, Germany for the announcement of Nextcloud Hub 4. Overall, it was a really fun time meeting the team, watching the announcement. Nextcloud Hub 4 has a lot of new features, including AI integrations. They have a desktop client for talk now. Just a whole bunch of stuff. I did a whole separate announcement video highlighting some of the key things. That will be linked down below if you're interested. What this video is going to be is my interview with Frank, the CEO of Nextcloud. We sat together and talked about some of their new ethical AI, kind of how they're rating that, some of the new features, some features that might be coming in a future release, and some other important topics. Now, before I get into the interview, this video is sponsored by Linode. Keeping it in topic of Nextcloud, they've recently switched over their one-click installer for Nextcloud to the all-in-one instance, which is a suite of Docker containers that all run together. So with a single click, you can do that. I have a whole separate tutorial on that, going over how to set that up on the node, but now you, know, you don't need my tutorial. They have a bunch of applications in addition to Nextcloud, as well as being able to just to spin up a Linux server of your choice. If you use the link down below, you get a $100 60-day credit to get started today. One thing to keep note of is right now the Nextcloud all-in-one instance is not yet updated to Nextcloud Hub 4 or version 26, so I've been kind of keeping an eye on that as I want to install it locally once that update pushes through. During this interview, I was not mic'd up, so let's let Frank take it away. Yeah, that's something that's uh, super important for us because um, I think everybody here uh, heard the big AI stories in the last few weeks and months all over the internet. And AI is, of course, a super powerful tool, which I think I really believe it will change our lives. But um, there are lots of ethical questions behind it. For example, so if there's discrimination in the data set, or what is the CO2 footprint of all these big uh, uh, rendering clusters, and this is uh, expensive GPUs, and um, what about the privacy? I mean, if you're sending all our documents, our mails, to some remote web service, um, then are the data like safe there? There are lots of open questions. So we actually um, decided to put our AI features into an ethical framework, which means we have different labels. We introduced this like traffic light symbols, and actually not with three, but with four uh, wow. like uh, stages. Um, the first is green. This is like, um, in, in, uh, according to our definition, fully ethical um, AI solution because the code is open source, which means you can check um, if it's efficient or not, and if it uh, can be improved, and it can be better, and yeah, create less uh, energy consumption in the future. Um, the second uh, um, thing is that it, we think that the machine learning model should be freely available, because then you can run it on-premise. You can have on your own server your own machine learning system. And uh, the third requirement is the data set it should also be open, freely available, because then you can make sure that there's no discriminating uh, data in it, and if yes, and can detect it and fix it. Yeah, as you said, we actually have uh, several cool features in this release, from translation or completely on device to um, to speech to text, and uh, document classification and several uh, more things. Um, yeah, we're experimenting with new features. For example, we're experimenting with summarizing content, and also being able to transcribe like a call and then creating a summary. And um, this um, didn't make the cut this time, so we are not happy with the quality. We'll keep on working on that, and it might come in a future release. It depends on really who you're asking, right? I mean, there is like, I don't know, there might be just the normal users out there. Uh, they're probably happy with just a gift picker in a chat, right? We can post funny pictures. People really like that. But for more for business users, there might be a feature like the exchange connector. That you can use like the calendar and context front end from Nextcloud to connect to the existing exchange server, which you might create slowly over time. This might be super useful for them, yeah, for some companies. Um, there's also the desktop client for Talk. It's a super highly requested feature and yeah, many, many more things. So yeah, this is funny because this feature is actually, um, we had a plan to develop it for many years uh, already and we already started with something a few years ago similar and then it somehow got stuck and then we restarted the initiative also together with this community member that is now a team a team member now um, for the tables app if you look at the apps lots of the apps that we have in our app store that community people made like a like a cookbook for example or a, like a to-do list or some tool to manage i don't know some things they are often like relatively simple database applications where you have some items with 
like a picture and a link and uh, some checkbox and some options and then you can search them and you edit them and reorder them and change them and so on and um, the idea is if you can do something like that with like no code or um, very little code um, that you can basically configure your own management of your i don't know your your, your library or like i don't know like your latest trips with your bike or something like that yeah. you can just like configure it together and you have a little small application to manage your personal data and that's of course also the idea uh, that uh, sharepoint is following so this application is also heavily inspired um, to be like an alternative replacement for, for microsoft sharepoint yeah yeah, yeah exactly uh, we have a great example for that just in this release and this is the notes the notes app notes app is a community app existed for for a long time and it's actually a, a server app and it also comes together with an Android and an iOS app for mobile. They were done by the community, like three different community people actually, and they did a really, really great job with that. The thing is that uh, we wanted to ship it by default, to standardize it a little bit, and also we wanted to uh, lower the price of these mobile apps to zero to make them free. Because these two community members decided, which is totally fine, to uh, charge some money for it, for yeah, fund like a development. And, but for Nextcloud size, our philosophy that everything should be like freely available. So we made like an arrangement with them and decided um, to yeah, make it a first class citizen and uh, lower the price for free and improved like authentication, few other things a little bit, it integrated a smart ticker now. And now it's basically, yeah, an even better note taking uh, solution. Well, there are, there are lots of things, of course, right? I mean, you have to, um, the biggest one is probably um, to really come up and improve uh, and live like a really good open source business model because um, on one hand it's of course our goal to make uh, next community open source freely available for everybody free as in beer and also free as in freedom right um, and on the other hand we we need some uh, revenue to pay for the people right? and we also decided as next law to not accept any venture capital fund funding or other things so we really need to have like our yeah, paying customers to pay like for the whole team the team is getting quite big nowadays and this is something it's a it's, it's a challenge to find the right balance somehow to give like the community like a free tool that everybody can use and like um, but at the same time the big organizations to provide them some some things that they want to have a business model a subscription uh, to pay for everything that's probably the main challenge yeah. We really have to go back to like the, the mission and vision behind Nextcloud here. And I mean, I started um, all of that because I wanted to have a, a more decentralized internet. That not like four or five big companies host all the data of every person on the planet. I don't like that. I think we should, everybody should have the option to be more decentralized. Some people might prefer to host it themselves. Of course, as you said, you need to need to have the skills for that. Not everybody should run a server on the internet. But others also might have, I don't know, they get like an Nextcloud from your university or school or your company or something. So this is really the mission. Um, and because of that, we decided that we don't want to host anything because this would then somehow become like the official central Nextcloud and we don't really want that. But to your question, we actually have some organizations who offer exactly that. I don't know if it's exactly 20 bucks for 500 yeah, gigs, yeah. but they're really yeah. attractive hosters, yeah. like uh, lots of them all over the internet. And that was the interview. That was just a few hours before the actual event, so I don't want to take too much of his time. Got some important questions in, though. I do hope you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two. Again, if you want to learn more about the event or any of the updates in Hub4, I will, again, will link to my video down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good. Bye.